welcome back. This is part three of a formal dining lesson. I'm Gloria Starr, the International Etiquette Coach of Choice. Again, we're using our Versace China. Everything has been cleared from our first course, second course salad, and the entree. And we are now at the stage where we're going to have dessert, tea, and coffee. So I actually have a fresh napkin for this segment, although that's not essential. Napkin again opened up halfway and on your lap. So here what we have in the center in front of us is going to be the plate that our dessert will be put on. And the cutlery items above the plate are going to be for your dessert. So if you have wait staff or if you have uh, the opportunity when dining in a fine restaurant, the wait staff will come along and they will take your cutlery and slide it, not pick it up, slide it around like this and then you are actually ready for your dessert. If you have a flat plate like this, it probably means you're going to be having a pie or a piece of cake. And in that case, again, using the dining skills that we learned earlier for European dining, the fork is in the left hand with your forefinger here and the base of the, uh, the fork in the center of your hand. So the fork for coffee, for your pie or your cake is held in your left hand, the spoon on the other hand in your right hand, and you're actually eating your item with the spoon. The fork is designed to just hold it in place. If you're resting, the cutlery is open, and the wet, that means that the wait staff should actually know that, but they may not in a restaurant. And if you are finished, then your cutlery is in a 612 or 410 position such as that. Now we're also having tea and coffee service and with the coffee pot it's always tall and lean and the teapot is short and stout. And then we have a miniature version of this for our cream and for our sugar. If you're having coffee, you may have a creamer or a cream, where if you're having tea, you're either having milk or lemon. And so you might have a small plate with wedges of lemon on the table as well. And in Europe, they would ask you if you'd like your tea or coffee, black or white. And obviously that means with cream or milk. So with our coffee pot here, what I recommend that you do so that you never break or crack your tea or coffee pot. Boil your water, then take an item such as a knife and set it in the tea, in the tea or coffee pot. Pour the hot water onto the knife. The knife, being metal, breaks the heat and absorbs the heat so that you never break your tea or coffee pot. Then once the pot has been heated, you would empty that water out and then fill it again with your coffee or your tea. And tea tastes much better if you bring it to just below the boiling point. If it's boiling, then you would find that you actually create a bitterness in the tea. And with tea, I also like to pour the water in and then set the tea bags in or the loose tea leaves and allow that to steep and uh, makes a much better cup of tea. So here we have our tea or our coffee cups and we have a small spoon that is appropriate for stirring. And so once you stir it, you would have to set your teaspoon down on the saucer underneath your tea cup and then you bring the cup up to you like this. And even if it's too hot, you never blow on it. And everything that you do from putting the sugar or the cream on, it's always very quiet. So there's no distracting noises. And then prior to your dessert, uh, you're going to be using your napkin. And also just before you have a cup or sip of your beverage, you would use your napkin so that you don't have any food particles going on the edge of your cup. Ladies, always drink out of one place on your cup or your glass so there isn't lipstick all the way around. And an easy solution to lipstick is take your lip liner, cover the edging outline, 
then inside, and then use a very dry lipstick with a low amount of wax in it so that the lipstick stays on your lips rather than going on the napkin or on the cup. The hands are always seen on the table. The forearms may be seen, but the elbows are never seen. When you're seated at a table, you're seated so that your derriere is at the back of your chair, but your back is never leaning against the back of the chair. You're sitting up straight, and your role in a table of four or six is to interact with the person on your right and your left. A table for four, you would interact with everyone because the table is small enough to do so. Conversation should be light and entertaining unless it's a business meeting. If you are in a business meeting uh, in a restaurant, men and women do not talk business until the menus have been given and the orders have been taken and the menus taken away. And then some business conversation may happen at that point. That's in North America and Canada. If you are in Asia, you never, ever talk business at the meal. So keep that in mind. And don't try to outdrink the Asian people on their sake. You will never do that. An easy guideline when dining in Asia is to never finish everything. The host may perceive you still to be hungry if you finish every single item on your plate. So you leave a little bit there and you also never drink all of your sake. When that is finished, uh, they assume that you'd like more. When I was in Asia recently, I noticed that they don't bother saying thank you to the wait staff, but this is what they do instead. They take the knuckle and they just tap, tap, and that says thank you to them. So enjoy the dining and it's much more enjoyable when you know the tools of the table and the etiquette lessons that will make you feel comfortable. It's a bit of a learning curve, absolutely. However, once you learn it and use it daily with your family and your friends, you will find on special occasions that there's no stress, just pure enjoyment because you know the rules of etiquette. Gloria Starr, the etiquette expert of choice.